Hey everybody, Bob here and welcome back to another Making Stuff video. Today I am going to finish working on the giant CNC router. Yes, I'm going to get it ready so I can start cutting some projects on it. I am this close to having it finished, but I've got two little bitty problems that I need to fix. So let's head on over here and I will show you what those are. So here is my first problem. It's this MDF. It wants to move around on me even though I've got the bottom layer bolted to the frame of the machine. This top layer is just sitting here and I need to fasten it to this bottom layer somehow. Now I thought about putting screws through the top layer of MDF into the bottom layer, but that just presents things that a router bit could hit when I make a mistake, even if I countersink it. So I don't want to do that. And I have seen other people do this, and I'm going to try this. I'm going to glue this top layer to the bottom layer, and then hopefully that will keep this MDF from moving around along with the temperature and humidity changes. So I've got the top and bottom layers glued together and I've given them 24 hours to dry and now this top layer is not flat. And I know it's not flat because when I put my straight edge on here you can obviously see that it wants to seesaw back and forth and then I can also move it down a little bit and now it doesn't seesaw when I push on the edges but you can see there's a pretty big gap underneath this straight edge. So the straight edge has shown me that the table is definitely not flat, but I don't know how bad it is. So what I've done is I've taken my dial indicator and I've just made this little shaft for it. And this is quarter inch, so I can mount this into the spindle of the machine and then move it around. And I can see just how bad the table is. And I can also find the high point and the low point. All right, so I've moved that dial indicator all over the surface of this table, and I have found that right here is the highest point of the table, and right here is the lowest point of the table. So this side of the table is definitely worse than that side over there. And also with that dial indicator, I've been able to figure out that the difference between here and here is 200 thousandths of an inch. That's almost a quarter of an inch out between these two points right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to surface this table and I'm going to do that with a surfacing bit. I got this one on Amazon and there's a link to it down in the description. It is about an inch wide and my table surface is 50 inches by 90 inches. So this bit has to travel over the entire tabletop to surface it. So this is going to take a while, but before I can do that, I need to do one more thing, and that is add some type of dust collection. Now I've had a little bit of problem in this area because I need to add some type of a dust shoe to the machine, and the spindle that I'm using is kind of an oddball. It's a 55 millimeter diameter, and I can't find any commercially available 55 diameter dust shoes like this one. The closest I could find was 65 millimeters, so I fixed that problem by 3D printing one of these little adapter rings that will go in here and then in the spindle. And that worked, it worked great. But that presented another problem. And that problem that I have is this dust shoe is just too tall this way. Unless I'm using a really long bit, the end of the bit would wind up somewhere right about here. And that just doesn't leave enough space to lower this to make a cut because this metal part of the dust shoe would touch the workpiece that I'm trying to cut and it wouldn't be able to plunge down into it. So what I did is I just took the dust shoe that I was using on the MPCNC and I modified it a little bit. This is 3D printed and this yellow part is the new part 
that's different from the MPCNC, but I just added a ring on here that's 55 millimeters, so it'll fit on the spindle that I'm using right now, and it just friction fits on there, and it seems to work fine. And like I said, this is just like the one on the MPCNC. It actually uses the same brush, and it's just held on by magnets. It worked great on the MPCNC, so hopefully it'll work great on this machine too. So I've got a smooth, flat spoil board on the CNC machine, so I think it's ready to start making some cuts. So the first thing I did is I put a piece of scrap wood on the machine, and then I cut out some test blocks that I drew in SketchUp. And I got the idea for these test blocks from uh, some projects that I want to do. I've got some ideas for some furniture, and I also just need to make sure everything fit. So you can see I've got pockets and tabs and I can make sure everything fits nice, neat, and snug. Also, I can measure these and make sure that they're, the machine is cutting square and that it's cutting the right dimensions. So this machine is ready to go. I can't wait to start cutting some projects on it. I do need to still clean up the electronics and make an enclosure for all of the electronic components, but I think I'm gonna do that at a later date because right now I'm anxious and I wanna start making some stuff with this machine. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give me that big thumbs up. And if you are not a subscriber and you made it this far in the video, you might as well hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming Making Stuff videos. And thanks for watching.